Well, now it's time to harden the blade. It's far from perfect. I still think the handle's much too long and I really messed up the plunge lines, but I managed to save it a little bit and actually managed to get quite a nice polish on the blade. Um, so now I'm gonna harden it. The problem with it is that I don't know what steel this is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of do some guesswork and also I happen to have the messed up attempt I, I, you saw me try before. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to try it with this one um, and the first thing I'm going to do is heat it to critical temperature in other words when it loses its magnetism wait another sort of 30 seconds and then I'm going to quench it in um, heated oil which is how I would treat 1070 steel or 1090 steel if that doesn't work if it doesn't harden properly what I will do is try it again and this time quench it in either cool oil or water and shock it. Um, I don't think I'll have to do that. I've got a funny, I think the oil will probably work, but it means that I don't have to try it on my actual blade and I'll have a proper, better sense of, of how to treat the metal. So I'm warming up the forge. Uh, it should be ready in about 25 minutes and we'll go for it. See you then. Okay, so the forge is nearly at temperature. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of, uh, of scrap steel in the forge and I'm going to use that, I'm going to quench it and that will start heating up the oil. It might take a couple of goes doing that. 
Um, but I don't want the oil to be cold the first time I quench the steel. So now it's time to try with the, uh, the dummy blade. Uh, I don't have to put the whole thing in because the handle doesn't need to be hardened. Um, so, and I've turned the, the fire down a bit because you don't want it to be too crazy hot. Well, as I melt it again. <laughs> okay, and now for the quench. Another test. See that's skating across. The, the file isn't biting. That means it's successfully hardened. Whereas here, it's catching. But there, nothing. Okay, so that means that I've got the quench right. So now it's time to do the number one blade. All good. Ooh. It has got a little warp. It has got a little bit of a warp. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. It's got a warp here. But I think I'll be able to straighten that. So next it's going to be in the oven at 200 degrees Celsius for two hours to temper. Tempering is, is very important and crucial in fact. So this is the blade that's been hardened but hasn't been tempered. It's very very brittle. Now you wouldn't want to do this to your knife even after tempering, but that is really brittle. There's no give in that at all. It's it's just solid, hard. So it would be useless as a knife. Okay, the blade is now hardened and tempered. Um, I'm going to start calling this blade the comedy of errors. I've decided, apart from the fact that this blade is my second attempt. I made another very obvious mistake, which is annoying me beyond belief. I started the bevel on this side of the choil. This is the choil here. Now the whole point of the choil is that it's to facilitate the sharpening of the blade without impeding on the ricasso. It should have been ground like that. Now in one sense, that could cause me some advantage or give me some advantages because I'm not at all happy with my plunge lines. But conversely, if you see, I've got a terrible mess here where I went in too deep. So what I'm going to try and do is to make the most of a bad situation. There's also a little bit of a warp, which again, I think was caused by this thinness here, which meant that there wasn't an even um, in the quench. That was a weakness. Anyway, I'm going to do my best to try and save this blade because I would hate this video not to have any sort of ending. Um, so I'm going to try and heat the blade up and straighten it. I'm going to try and recut the bevel uh, on the grinder before I can even begin thinking about a handle. So bear with me.
So now it's time to get onto the lathe and start preparing the pins that are going to go through the handle. They're made out of brass and um, the, the only tricky one for me was the bigger one, the six millimeter one, because I don't have any six millimeter rod. So I had to bring that one down, bringing, using some tooling, but also most usefully the file. So that's the process that's going on here. It's a little bit loose, but that'll work. Right. I was looking for what material to make the handle out of, and I've decided that actually I would use the offcut from the lovely olive wood that I used for my Japanese knife. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do very much with that anyway, so I thought that would actually make a lovely handle. Um, and it means I don't waste it. I've cut, I've got the, the brass ready for the, for the pins. That one's a bit loose, but... Actually, it's very loose, but it won't be in the handle, so it's okay. And then these <coughs> for the end piece. Okay, so now I'm going to cut the wood, uh, and then we'll carry on from there. So I've marked this one as being the right top. I've done the same with this one. And now I can mark out... this outline. So this process actually strangely is one of the, uh, the, the most stressful of the process, which is the final assembly of the handle using two-part epoxy. The reason it's stressful is that it's very messy and you have to work reasonably fast because this epoxy dries quite quickly and becomes increasingly tacky and therefore becomes increasingly difficult to handle. But once you've got it all together, once it fits, it's a bit of a relief and I then clamp it up very tightly. And although I say this epoxy dries quickly, I am gonna let it dry overnight just to be really safe. And as you can see, I've covered the blade in masking tape for protection. We are now the next morning. I've let this cure overnight. This epoxy actually dries much quicker than that, but I, I, I really feel it's safer just to wait and give it you know, several hours to cure properly so I know that it's all cured in the middle. So I'm going to take these clamps apart, it might take a little bit of work. And I realized that I, I made a mistake actually, or an omission, which is that really it's advisable to work the bolster part of the handle before gluing it because it, there's such a risk of, of damaging the blade when you're trying to work this bolster and shaping it properly. But So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some duct tape on the blade to really protect it so that I can work on that. The other piece of advice I have learnt, or what I could give you having learnt the hard way, is when you're starting to shape the handle on the belt grinder, make sure you use a fresh belt. Um, that has a couple of important effects. One is that it cuts very easily, so you don't have to, you're not tempted to push, and also you're far less likely by, as a result, to burn the wood, because burning the wood is such a shame when you've got such a lovely hardwood.
Okay. As you know by now, this is my my favourite part of the operation, pretty much. Well, if you remember, the challenge was to turn this into a blade, or into a knife. And um, this is where we've got to. Um, as you know, if you've watched all this, there have been some ups and some downs. Uh, there was, this was my second blade I had to forge. I think there are, there are issues, it's far from perfect. But you know what? I feel personally extremely chuffed that I turned that into that um, this is the famous bit right this was working fine inside now it's probably not going to work at all oh yeah I'm not doing it very well anyway it's not bad um, <laughs> I've always wanted to do that <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this challenge and you found it fun, please click the subscribe button on the bottom right-hand side of your screen and many more videos to come. Thanks again.